Taxes are the single largest expense that most people will pay in their lifetime. Not their homes, not their cars, not their student loans, and so on. It's taxes. The stronger the taxes get, the less freedom we all have, so you can't overlook either one of these two. The average person pays 25% of their income in taxes. And if you are skilled enough to earn more than the average person, congratulations. You can pay up to 50% of every dollar you earn in taxes. Like, really think about it. Every day you work, you are devoting 25 to 50% of your workday to paying your taxes. A big chunk of your working life is being allocated to paying taxes, which leaves you with less money to build wealth, support your family, or create the life that you desire. But it doesn't have to be that way. There is a 76,000 page coupon book that you can use to pay less taxes, the tax code. Some of the richest people in America use it to legally pay almost 0% of their income in taxes. And literally anyone, regardless of their income, can use this coupon book to pay less taxes and keep more of their hard earned money. And that's what this episode is all about. I am going to give you the six key areas you need to focus on to reduce your taxes by thousands of dollars. My name is Sherman, the CPA, and I have used these strategies to save my clients millions of dollars in taxes at mycpacoach.com. Everything you are about to learn is tried and tested. So be sure to save this video, comment below if you have any questions, and make sure you subscribe for more guidance to less stress and lower taxes. All right, so if you wanna pay less taxes, you need to first understand your tax bracket. Take a look at this chart and find the highest tax bracket that your income falls in based on your filing status. As you can see, tax brackets currently range from 10 to 37% and your income is broken into these brackets to determine your overall federal tax liability. Now, once you find your tax bracket, ask yourself, what if you somehow decrease your tax bracket? Like what if you went from a 32% tax rate to a 24% tax rate? How many thousands of dollars would that save you in taxes? Well, the things that I'm about to show you will actually help you reduce the income you report on your tax return. And less income means lower tax rates, which will help you pay less taxes or even get a larger tax refund. By reporting less taxable income, you pay less taxes. It's that simple. But how exactly do you report less taxable income without making less money? That's where the 76,000 page coupon book we talked about earlier comes into play. I'm gonna break this down in six simple steps, starting with the basics, and then we will warm up to some more advanced stuff towards the end of the video. Number one, use tax deductions to report less income. Tax deductions are dollar for dollar reductions in the income reported on your tax return. So if you want to pay the least amount of tax possible, you will want to take all tax deductions that you qualify for, not just some, but all. The most basic tax deductions are the standard deduction and the itemized deduction. And literally anyone can take any one of these two deductions. This is the first decision you will need to make to reduce your taxes, which will save you the most money the standard deduction or the itemized deduction. In 2023, the standard deduction was about $14,000 for single taxpayers or about $28,000 for married taxpayers, which means that in order for the itemized deduction to be more beneficial for you, your itemized deduction should exceed these amounts. One of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people make is that they take the standard deduction when the itemized deduction is actually more beneficial for them. So what exactly is the itemized deduction? The itemized deduction allows you to write off certain expenses you pay for as an individual, such as medical and dental expenses that exceed 7.5% of your income, up to $10,000 of state and local taxes, which by the way, includes property tax, any mortgage interest expense you paid, and any gifts you made to qualifying charities. So if you incurred a lot of any one of these expenses, make sure you tally all of them up to determine if the itemized deduction is more beneficial for you than the standard deduction. But once you've made this decision, the next thing you will want to deduct are any investments you've made into tax advantage accounts. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Number two, make tax deductible investments. 
So the tax law will give you a tax deduction to make certain types of investments into tax advantage accounts. This is historically one of the most popular ways to pay less taxes and almost anyone has the ability to do this to some degree. The three most popular tax advantage accounts are number one, traditional IRAs, which stands for traditional retirement accounts that anyone can set up. Number two, traditional 401ks, which are typically set up through an employer. And by the way, you can do this in addition to your IRA. And number three, health savings accounts, which are savings accounts for health related expenses. Now, at the time of this video, you can contribute up to $7,000 into a traditional IRA or eight grand if you're over the age of 50, $23,000 into a traditional 401k or a little over 30,000 if you're over 50, and $4,150 into an HSA, and you can add $1,000 to that if you're over 50. That's about $35,000 in tax deductions that you can create by simply transferring money to these tax advantage accounts. And by the way, if you're married, you can get twice as much in, which would create up to $70,000 in tax deductions. Now there are rules to these accounts, with the largest being that you cannot withdraw your funds until you're 59 and a half, and you may be subject to taxes upon doing so, depending on your tax bracket. Now, most people who use these accounts do so in their high earning years when they are in very high tax brackets and make withdrawals when they are in lower tax brackets. I've already published in-depth videos on these topics, so be sure to subscribe if you wanna learn more. All right, so, so far we've addressed individual tax deductions that you can use to reduce your income. But I wanna take a second and talk to people who may own a business or earn 1099 income, even if it's just a side hustle. If that's you, then you can unlock significantly more tax deductions. So let's talk about that quickly. Number three, write off almost everything under your business. So check this out. Business owners can take advantage of all of the tax deductions we've already discussed and write off much more, like their vehicle expenses, home expenses, meal expenses, travel expenses, advertising, and so on. There just has to be a business purpose associated with the expense and you can write off the portion that reflects the business use of it. In addition to that, you have the ability to create tax write-offs through your business that can reduce your income by thousands of dollars. For example, business owners can hire their kids and write off the amounts that they pay them. They can also rent their personal residence to their business and write off the payments they make to themselves. And they can also contribute three times more to retirement accounts than employees. And the list goes on and on. I recently published a video on the top 30 business tax write-offs and strategies that dig deeper into this. So be sure to subscribe and check that out to learn more. So that's individual and business deductions in a nutshell. Deductions are one of the most powerful ways to pay less taxes, but this is just one way to pay less taxes. We still have a few more huge ways to reduce your taxes, so let's keep this going here. Number four, reporting investment losses to reduce your taxable income. Just like how tax deductions reduce your taxable income, certain types of investment losses can reduce your income and taxes as well. Trading losses, business losses, real estate losses, and other types of investment losses can be used to reduce your income, which will then reduce your taxes. Now, to be fair, there is an art to using investment losses to reduce your taxes. There's a lot of red tape that you can get caught up into if you are not careful. For example, reporting large business losses can increase your audit risk. Trading losses are typically limited to $3,000 in certain circumstances, and you have to meet certain criteria if you want to use real estate losses to reduce your taxable income. But with that said, this can still be done and is often still done by the ultra wealthy to pay little to no taxes. There are literally billion dollar corporations that report losses when they file their tax return, often done as a result Result of using legal tax strategies and deductions. You just have to know the rules of the game and you can play it just like they do. So let's use real estate as an example here, which is one of the most popular assets used by high income earners to pay less taxes. So first of all, most real estate investors show losses on their tax return. This is no secret to the IRS. And it's largely because of depreciation, which is a non-cash expense that does not cost you any money out of your pocket. The tax law gives real estate investors 
investors this tax deduction as an incentive to encourage real estate investment. And this deduction is so valuable that it typically wipes out most of the rental income reported on these investors' tax returns, resulting in little to no taxes paid on their rental income. Plus, there are ways to take extremely large amounts of depreciation to trigger deductions so large that it actually offsets other income on your tax return if you meet certain criteria. Now that criteria typically involves being classified as a real estate professional, which is simply based on the amount of time you spend in those real estate activities or investing into short-term rentals like Airbnbs. I also have full videos on this already on our channel if you wanna learn more. Number five, earn tax-free income. A very easy way to pay less taxes is to invest into assets that are not subject to any income tax at all. And yes, you heard that correctly. You can earn tax-free income on certain investments due to provisions in the 76,000 page coupon book. For example, if you lend money to the government in the form of municipal bonds, the income you earn will be exempt from federal, state, and local taxes. Another example of this would be treasury securities, which is money lent to the federal government. Your earnings from these type of investments are also exempt from state and local taxes. But the most popular way to build tax-free wealth in America is through the Roth IRA or 401k. Now, unlike the retirement accounts we discussed earlier in this video, you do not get a tax deduction when you contribute money to a Roth. Instead, a Roth is funded with after-tax dollars, but all of your investment earnings are tax-free when you withdraw it during retirement. You can use a Roth to make almost any type of investment, from investments into stocks, bonds, real estate, and even private business ventures. To learn more, be sure to subscribe and watch my full video on the top 10 tax-free investments. All right, so everything we've discussed so far has involved your income, your deductions, and your investments. But there is still one major way to pay less money in taxes that does not have much to do with any of this. Number six, get paid by the government. As crazy as it sounds, the government will pay you money at tax time if you meet certain criteria. I'm talking about qualifying for tax credits. Now, tax credits directly reduce your taxes and can even be refunded to you if you have no taxes left to pay. The government uses tax credits to either one, support taxpayers who need assistance, or two, reward taxpayers who help the government do number one or accomplish their political agenda. Now, regardless of which side you fall on, it is very important for you to claim all tax credits you qualify for if you want to pay less taxes. So here are some of the most popular individual tax credits. The electric vehicle tax credit, which rewards taxpayers up to $7,500 for purchasing an electric vehicle to combat climate change. Number two, the American Opportunity Tax Credit, which rewards taxpayers up to $2,500 for pursuing higher education and reimburses a portion of those expenses. The Earned Income Tax Credit, which seeks to provide assistance to workers whose incomes are near the poverty line. And number four, the Child Tax Credit, which seeks to combat and reduce child poverty by supplementing the earnings of low to moderate income families. And those are just for individuals. But then if you own a business, there is also the research and development tax credit, which rewards businesses who pursue research and development activities to develop or improve any business process, technique, formula or invention. And then there is the work opportunity tax credit, which is used to incentivize businesses to hire groups of people who have faced barriers to employment, like veterans, people with disabilities, ex-felons, and so on. And then finally, there's the opportunity zone tax credit, which incentivizes businesses who locate in developing areas. So if you think you qualify for any of these, talk to your tax advisor or look into it yourself to put the most amount of money back into your pockets. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to learn even more ways to reduce your taxes. And if you want a tax plan that is guaranteed to reduce your taxes, go to mycpacoach.com right now to talk to a tax professional ASAP.